Well, now let's get along to uh, the special segments that we have for tonight. Uh, the first one is Motrax Build Along, where we're having four modelers build the same model in four different scales, N scale, H, O, S, and O scale. Uh, one of the modelers in Canada, Clark Cooming, uh, hasn't received his model yet. Uh, it's just, it's in the Canadian postal system on its way to him, but he hasn't received it yet. Uh, everybody else has received their model. Uh, Phil at home, unfortunately, couldn't be with us tonight. So we only have two of the modelers who, of the four, uh, that are going to be able to start the uh, the build along with you tonight, and that's Greg Cassidy and Bob Farquhar. Bob is uh, building the S scale version, and Greg is building the HO version. So, Greg, I'll turn it over to uh, to you and Bob. All right, thank you, Jim. Let me bring up my part of the presentation. So, what we're doing here is something we've never tried before. And that's building a build along with the same kit in four different scales. And last week, we were able to show you what arrived in the packages, except for Clark's. We think a moose ran off with it. Uh, and there were differences in the different scales, as you would expect. But it's interesting to see what the differences are. Some of them are the wood that's used. Some of them are the way things are cut. Uh, so what I'm going to do tonight is show you uh, my first two steps of the HO build, and then Bob will come along behind me and show his first two parts of the S scale build. And uh, by next week, Phil will be able to be on and Clark will have his kit and they'll be able to show you how they did theirs. So uh, for part one, we're going to be showing preparing the wood pieces, including texturing, staining, and painting. Um, for my HO scale, as usual, I would start out with cutting my bracing. Uh, after measuring it, I'll use my ultimation cutter and cut it to length. One of the things that I noticed in the HO scale kit of this is the walls are nice and thick. And since it's not clapboard, there's going to be very little warping. So I didn't need to do a lot of bracing on it because I was going to be applying a light paint. If you were going to be doing heavy staining or something, you might want to put a little more bracing on. Uh, I went ahead and glued on my bracing, as you can see in the lower photograph. And then after I took that picture, I put a small piece of bracing over the two doorways just to strengthen them. Greg, wait, excuse me. Is that, yes. when, you, when you brace, is it vertical or horizontal? Well, it depends on the wood you're bracing, Jim. If I'm doing something like clapboard, it'll be vertical. Uh, if you're doing something like board and batten, I'll brace it horizontal. Uh, once you've worked with wood some, you kind of get a feel for which way it's going to start bending once you get it wet. And it depends on the grain and the cut of the wood. Um, if you're unsure, it, you know, sometimes you can brace it in both directions. Or if you have a part of the sheet that it came out of, you can go ahead and get that wet and see which way it tends to turn but it's usually bracing against the grain and against the cut of the wood, which is usually going with the grain. Thank you. Uh-huh. And one of the little tricks I like to do uh, is put a bevel on the top edge of my walls if I have uh, a gable type roof. And the reason I do that is so that then when the roof is put on, it'll sit flat on that wall and it gives me a better gluing edge and it gives me a chance to use my ultimation sander. Uh, now I was getting ready to paint my walls. I was gonna be using a light cream and a dark brown. So I got all my pieces that I was gonna paint in the light cream together first and I painted them with my airbrush. And in the lower photos, that's them already painted. They don't look very different than the wooden color, but when you see it in real life, you can tell they're painted. Uh, then since my building was gonna be in pretty well-kept shape, I didn't do a lot of weathering or peeling paint on it, but I did use a little wire scratcher that I have to put some wood grain in it. Greg, can I ask you another question? Sure Did, can. When you talk about uh, painting, 
Mm -hmm. Is this both sides or one side? How do you, what, what, what are you painting? When I'm painting this kit, I painted the outside only. I was not going to be detailing the inside. And I had enough bracing that I didn't have to worry about painting the inside. Uh, sometimes with paint or stains, if they're going to introduce a lot of water into the wood, you can paint both sides and that can help minimize the warping. Or if you're going to detail the interior, you'll be painting the inside walls anyway. But in this case, I was just painting the outside walls. Thank you. Uh, then I took my burnt umber paint. And again, using the airbrush, I just sprayed my windows and doors. Um, I'll spray them usually on the sprue. And then once I cut them off, I'll use a brush to touch up where they've been cut off, just as Ted was showing earlier. And for my building, I was going to have a brown lower band going all the way around it. So instead of measuring all the walls, plus all the strip wood for the corners and trying to get that even, I just assembled the building and then put tape around it and sprayed my lower part of the building with my airbrush and the dark brown paint all at one time so that they all matched up. So at that paint, I had at that point I have the windows, doors, and walls painted. Uh, the next thing that we're doing uh, is moving on to the platform that this is going to sit on. Um, the first thing I did for my platform was put some wood grain in it. And I used a card file. You can also use a saw or a wire brush. Um, after I use a card file, I'll take an eraser over it and that takes off all of the little fuzzies. And then you can see that the wood grain is in there. And being that this is gonna be stained, the wood grain will show up real well. Now, for working with the platform that's gonna support the deck uh, I decided that I wanted to brace this. In HO scale, the platform walls are fairly thin. And I knew I was going to be putting a lot of heavy stain on it. So I wanted to make sure that they were well braced. So I just cut some strip wood that I had laying around. And after I glued the corners together and put my corner posts in, I put the strip wood in all the way around the inside. And that'll keep any warping from happening. Then after I did that, and before I stained it, I glued the platform to the decking itself. And then I put weights on it to let it sit. This way, it was going to make a nice, strong, monolithic structure that doesn't have any chance of warping. Now, once I went ahead and started staining it, I used three different colors. And one of the things I have is a piece of strip wood with each color stain on it. I made those whenever I get a new bottle of stain. And that way I can just pull out all of my strip wood and decide what colors I want to use. I have the color marked on them. And I wanted to use a variety of shades so that I got a different wear pattern in the top. And you can see in the upper photo now, that's how it came out looking once it was stained. And then since the corners had little alignment tabs on them, one of the things we decided we wanted to do was show a way to hide them. I just took some scale one by eight HO strip wood that I had. Uh, I stained it first and then cut it on my slicer and then just glued it over the corners of the posts. And that does a perfect job of hiding them. And it looks perfectly natural. So that's what I did with the HO scale one. I'm gonna step off now and let Bob show you what he did on his S scale. Okay. <clears throat> Come on here, there we go. <clears throat> so this is the S scale version of this uh, kit. There's some tools you need, just the regular tools. I'm not gonna talk about that. We talked about that in the past. There's the kit itself. Um, this is the platform we're going to be building the this one tonight, and a lot of strip wood. And the strip wood is nice, uh, nicely colored here on the end, which is really nice. Um, and this one particular one, I'm missing the uh, canopy roof uh, supports and the gable end. And the only reason I say that is yeah, that does happen. 
sometimes, and you have to make do. I made my own because the uh, instructions came with a template, how they would like the, what they look like and the shaping of them. So I use that to make uh, my own pieces. <clears throat> so again, like Greg, uh, you can use razor saw for putting the grain in the wood. This one doesn't have it yet, but uh, that's a good thick piece. So uh, that razor saw or card file uh, be good for that. Uh, the thinner pieces like this one here, I used a steel bristle brush on there. And so you may want to, depending on how, how much you work, uh, wear you want to have on the platform, you can actually use a knife and cut these uh, little slots in here, but better, bigger, then put a single edge razor blade you know, on the edge here and uh, bend up the pieces to make them look uh, warping or uh, splitting and tearing apart. But I was doing mine as being used, but not uh, abandoned type of thing. So the other thing I did is uh, on the every, for every, this on the edge here, I cut, <clears throat> use my uh, exactum blade and just cut a uh, slot in through all down here and like here and here and here. So when you're looking at it from the side, it'll be uh, noticeable. Uh, now, the nice job here, laser cutting. There's little, little tabs in here that are the coding here. You can see where, example, this particular piece is there and here. And there's one here and one here. So it takes nothing for a knife to slip them through there. You got your pieces out. So this is really nicely done. So when you laser, they laser cut anything, uh, their edges get burnt. Uh, all these edges, edges are burnt. But I don't worry about the top and bottom because the tops are going to be covered by this platform here. And the bottom, of course, is on the on their uh, the diorama or what are you going to be doing? But this edge here, I just put them on the sandpaper and uh, take the uh, burnt edge away. And so it's easier to stain or improves the stain of the paint you're putting on. There's, you know, talking about the strip wood coloring there. And what I've done in mine, I use a hundred line uh, driftwood. You can also use uh, alcohol, any ink or, you know, whatever you want to do there. But I wanted this color on mine. And, uh, and all these walls I'm going to be doing, uh, that's another uh, step we're doing next week. And uh, I wanted the this coloring in the background because I'm going to be scraping away some of the paint. But uh, this is not going to be used here for the platform. And then I do, I put it between two pieces of wax paper. Now, unlike Greg and a lot of other people, they put the, uh, the uh, bracing on first. And I don't put my bracing on until later. So all these are done without bracing. So I, I uh, use alcohol any ink on both sides, and then uh, I, I go as fast as I can and put the between piece of wax paper here and puts a lots of weight on there. So after a day, uh, they, these things didn't move at all. Uh, they were fine. Then I added my bracing later on. So this particular kit, uh, I assume it's gonna be a freight depot because it's pretty tall. I want to do mine as a pasture depot. So I cut this, this section off here in the bottom of every one of them. So I want to do to cut one first and then I use that to measure all the other ones, to make sure I got them on the same height. And there is a dissemble here. And it's like Greg as well. I use a thin piece of uh, wood here on each corner and uh, to hide those joining parts in there. So that, that's the effect I wanted anyway. And that's what I got. So thanks, it's, that's it for me. Any questions? Good. <laughs> um, Jim, and before we go, uh, Jeff Adam, who owns Motrack Models, uh, is also here and he'd like to say something as well. That would be great. But, uh, but Jeff, before you do, let me ask one question here. The, okay. the, one thing, the one thing, hearing both of you all talk about how you built the model, uh, Bob talked about the, uh, the burnt in. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg, did you not find the burnt in, or did you have another way of dealing with it, or it's just not important in HO? Well, I was going to be staining my deck real dark, and so it really wasn't going to show up. If I was using a lighter stain like Bob, then I would sand the end, but I got to admit, every now and then I forget, and then once I've stained it and the end is coming out darker, I go, oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but but it is he's he's right it does leave a burn mark everywhere it cuts and if you're if it's going to be shown and it's not going to be covered uh then it is a good idea to sand it back down to the base wood in, in almost in any scale that you're dealing with anything that's laser cut yes 